Greetings to all. In the last lecture, we have started to analyze the performance parameters with respect to the magnetizing currents, right? So, to find the magnetic fields and other parameters like MMFs and flux densities at different parts of iron, we require the actual and effective length of the iron core, right? If the mission core having the different ducts for the cooling purpose, then how to find the effective length of stator core and the effective length of rotor core. Some empirical formulas we will discuss in this lecture. If we will see here, the effective length of a core is a combination of iron length plus the duct length that is nothing but L e. The effective length of the core is a key parameter to solve the sizing equations where the d square L e term we have discussed, right? Okay. And flux densities at the different parts of iron and reluctances and MMFs and performance parameters and etcetera. Now, how to calculate the effective length? There is no straightforward equations. Some empirical formulas depends upon the literatures and depends upon the uh, experience with respect to the manufacturers. Some empirical formulas I will discuss in this lecture. We can see here there is no ducts on the rotor side as well as stator side and I am also showing here one type, one motor. This is the stator and this is the rotor. There is no duct on the stator side. The core is complete iron. Okay. Here uh, length of the core will be L e. L e is nothing but length of iron into stacking factor I can consider. But uh, with respect to the rotor, here also there is no ducts. Okay. That kind of structure I am showing at the left side and right side we can see large mission where the length of the core will be very high. This is the length of the core. Here we can see some ducts on the core. Here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 like that. Different ducts we can see on the stator core as well as rotor core. This is the rotor core and this is the stator core. Okay. If like this uh, ducts are there along with the iron, how to calculate the length of the stator core as well as rotor core? Let us consider the case 1 where stator and rotor having the same length, stator uh, core having the length L i s and rotor core having the length L i r, length of the iron with respect to the stator, length of the iron with respect to the rotor. Then effective length of the core is equals to L i plus 2 into L g, 2 into air gap length, where length of iron L i is equals to L i s equals to L i r. As of now, I have shown the uh, rotor as well as stator core without any duct, right? For that, L e is equals to, we have to calculate based on this equation. Next, with respect to the case 2 we will discuss. In case 2, stator length, core length as well as rotor core length are slightly different. Then how to find the effective length of the core? The effective length of the core L e is equals to mean of those two cores. Either stator core is different or rotor core is different. Okay. We have to do the mean length of the both cores is nothing but effective length of iron. Okay. Here the condition length of L i s should be less than the length effective length of the core less than the uh, iron length of the stator plus 8 times the air gap length. In this condition the mean we have to consider okay. for this kind of situation the effective length equation will be this one. Next, the effective length of the core with respect to the same number of stacks and same number of ducts. We can see here three uh, stacks we ha I have shown here L1, L2, L3 lengths and a number of ducts n equals to 2 the dist, uh, like duct length will be L naught S. Okay. Length of the each duct 
at the stator side will be L naught S and length of the each duct at the rotor side will be L naught R. So, with respect to this uh, these uh, different stacks at the stator side as well as rotor sides having the same length and ducts length at the stator side L naught S and L naught R the effective length equation will be like this empirical formula that is equals to length of iron plus 2 into length of air gap plus number of ducts into the mean of the ducts length L naught S plus L naught R by 2 into 5 by 5 plus duct length divided by air gap here also another term with respect to the rotor. Here length of iron is equals to the lengths of all stacks L1 plus L2 plus L3 and so on up to Ln plus 1. Okay. Here we can see both sides we have the ducts and the uh, length of the each uh, stack as well as length of the each duct is same. The next case where the rotor is cylindrical, rotor is smooth, stator side only we have the uh, ducts. We can see here this is one duct, second, third, fourth, five like that n number of ducts are there and rotor side we have the smooth surface, there is no duct. Okay. In this situation in order to find the effective length of the core L e is equals to this one is L i, L i plus 2 into L g plus n into L naught s into phi divided by phi plus L naught s divided by L g. Here length of iron is equals to sum of all uh, stack lengths and here two ducts I have shown but in the right side image we can see n number of ducts. Okay. Last case where the stator or rotor both consist of n number of ducts but both are not aligned we can see in this image. Stator also consists of 3 uh, stacks and rotor also consists of 3 stacks and 2 ducts. The ducts length at the stator side will be L naught X and duct length at the rotor side will be L naught R but the lengths are not aligned, misaligned here. Similarly here also whereas in the other cases the ducts are aligned. Okay. In this type of uh, uh, condition the effective length of the core L e is equals to length of the iron plus 2 times the effective length of the air gap plus the number of ducts by 2 into L naught s into some constant value and L naught r into some constant value and L i is nothing but effective length of iron it is a sum of all uh, stacks of the stator. Okay. So, these are the 5 different cases to find the effective length of uh, core. By utilizing this empirical formulas we can find the effective length of uh, core. Once we know the effective length of the core we can utilize that L e value effective length of core value to find the sizing equations, flux densities at the different parts and MMFs and reluctance and etcetera. So, we will utilize these equations to find the effective length in the coming lectures. So, with this I am concluding this lecture. In this lecture we have discussed the empirical formulas to find the effective length of the core. Thank you.